It's yeah. going live. Yay. All right, the Hangout is on the air. Here we are. Hey, thanks for joining us on our Mixed In Hangouts with Tony Littleton. We're talking about indie movie making, and this particular um, Hangout is we're going to try to talk about as much as we can about the sound you need to know and uh, you how, how to do for your indie movies. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's and, start with uh, the first question. Mm -hmm. How important do you think your sound is to a indie film? Or any film, for that better. Um, probably about ninety percent. About ninety percent. Ninety percent, at least. Yeah, I agree. Bad sound can ruin a movie. Um, if you've ever watched a movie that was mildly entertaining from the seventies, and when the person spoke, it was like they were speaking from across the room, or whatever, yeah. or in the closet. It just ruins the whole. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. Bad yeah. sound is terrible. So um, I yeah. have a I have a belief that if your video could be amazing, like a super awesome, you know, you got 1080p, the color is great and everything's good, but when they speak and it sounds echoey, like it's the maybe it's the yeah. sound from some from the camera somehow. The warehouse sound. Yeah. I yeah. might I might just skip the video because, or if I was browsing YouTube because I I I, I was actually distracted by the bad sound. And the other way around though, mm -hmm. if I think it's forgivable if the video quality is, you know, it's only 480p, uh, yeah. but they yeah. shot it well, but if the sound was really decent, mm -hmm. I'm going to give this episode a chance. So, yeah. Um sound is sound is very important. I will would just about say sound is the most important thing after the image itself. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Um, so yeah. when you when you break into um, considering making your short film, do you um, have so you go through like okay the style of thing I'm doing I'm going to need a certain kind of mics um, with the arsenal that you have. Do you go through that or is it a little bit more simple than that? Is you, it uh, let's say I only have a shotgun mic and I'm going to yeah. use it for everything. Yeah. And so that's going to be pretty much the way you do it. But for us, we, we have, like, two choices. we got, like, mm -hmm. some lapels, mm -hmm. and we got a shotgun mic. So we have to consider, is this shoot going to be worthy um, pointing that everywhere we go and trying to keep it out of the shot, or we might be yeah. able to successfully hide? Because we have not had good luck mixing mm -hmm. the two. So, yeah. You know, yeah, you never want to mix those two because... Um, the lapel mics, they get a very clean, uh, yes, they do. non muffled sound from you. It pretty much cancels everything else out to yeah. where um, the shotgun mic uh, gets a very roomy sound. And so if you try and mix those two together. It's a very rich, roomy sound. Yeah. yeah. Very nice uh, sound, but, you, but if you, you get the whole room. If you try and mix those two together, you can definitely yeah. tell the, uh, the mixing of the scenes. It'll, it'll take you right out of it. Yeah, it right it, out of the movie. It'll take you out every time. And um, one of the things I try to do when I'm mixing sound is if if I'm going to use a lapel indoors, then every indoor scene I can, I try to use a lapel. Yeah. And when I'm outside, I'll use my shotgun boom mic. Because if you're shooting indoor scenes and the sound is different, it's going to throw, throw everything off. It's going to sound terrible and... People are going to call you amateurs. The mark of an amateur is bad sound. I, I, I agree with you, but um, there was one time, though, that we tried the shotgun outside. And mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 way the, the way it works is it kind of rejects a lot of sound from the sides. And, and, and yeah. you, you kind of, I'm pointing here at this because I can see my, uh, I can see where I'm pointing on the shotgun. Yeah. The things behind it kind of get in, the, in it, too. But mm -hmm. definitely the things right in front of it worked really good. Well, one one time we were doing an episode. It wasn't a, a short film. We were doing, let's, uh, let's plug a show. It was the yeah. Mentos yeah, and Mentos Coke and episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was a guy that was weed eating his uh, weed whack in this oh, yard oh, behind yeah. us. Yeah. You could Entire hear yard. Not, not, you know, getting the edges. No, we're waiting. He was like, throwing his yard with stop. a weed whacker, yeah. Oh. So we ended up putting the lapels on. What's weird is 
you could hear our voices clear as day. Mm -hmm. You could you have to really search for it to hear that weed whacker. Yeah. So we got lucky. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. But everything else, I agree. It's like yeah, you get that shotgun mic, somebody to hold it really close, and mm -hmm. you really get the richness of their voice. You don't have to worry about hiding a lapel. But sometimes you don't get that. I mean, we were only like a two man crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So in, in in some of those cases, I think that um, we might have to like do some tests and see what they sound like. We might have some of those uh, scenarios. <laughs> you might have to hide a lapel on you somewhere. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah. the the shotgun mic is so much richer. It, mm -hmm. You get a really good sound. Well, you get like if if you're the shot you're going for is more of like a room shot, yeah. and you want people to feel like they're in that room. Mm -hmm. The shotgun mic is a good thing to go for because you get a lot of room sound. So. Yeah. Um, sometimes that is the enemy in, in film, but but so other times it, it adds to it. It adds to the whole atmosphere well, it, of uh, it, where you're it at. It cuts out a step. Usually when um, you start sound editing, you have your voice track, and then you have your room track as well. But mm -hmm. if you're catching it all with your shotgun mic, you're cutting out a step for your editor. Yeah. So um, you can... I wouldn't say do this, but you know how you get 30 seconds of quiet before you start filming so you can get the yeah. sound room? Yeah. Um, you can cut that step out, you know, but yeah. I would not suggest it. Always get no. the sound room. Yeah. Well, there's there are some parts where we we got to kill the sound completely because we don't mm -hmm. want, you know, uh, either the director giving, you know, directions to the to the talent or whatever have you. You just got to cut it all out, but you, you want some in there. You don't want to just go silent. You know, yeah, I'm gonna start, you yeah. know what I'm going to start doing the next time we do a short film in our house? Mm -hmm. Is I'm going to unplug the damn refrigerator. <laughs> because yeah. we'll do a shot and it sounds quite... Because you don't notice that sound. Yeah, you don't notice it. But when you the, the shotgun mic picks it up. And so one scene has this noise mm -hmm. and another scene doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. Like, what the hell is making... Oh... <laughs> Yeah. So sure. when I know that I'm going to be in that living room for three hours and we're going to shoot something, I'm going to plug that mm -hmm. mic because I haven't been doing that. And it's like one scene has this sound in it. Yeah. And another one doesn't. Oh, yeah. it's so frustrating. Oh, it's terrible. Um. Well, given the choice for the guy just starting out and he's looking to get into his own audio, would you would you suggest getting a shotgun mic first, or would you suggest getting the pals? Well. I, I, I have a suggestion, and, and a lot of guys are probably going to say no to it, but um, I was watching some YouTube videos on how to get something really good to, to do this stuff with. So I, I, I before I shot anything, before I even met William, I, yeah. I, I looked at YouTube videos to kind of get an idea of what I wanted, what I needed to have mm -hmm. to, to start shooting. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at all kinds of microphone videos and, and, and guys... And maybe I'll try to put, if I find the, the video again, I'll put the, the link to it in the description about this video, about the microphone that I got. And so when he bought it, he got it, and he, he was doing the whole video with that mic. And it's from China. So yes. I understand that a good microphone, American-made, is at least 250 bucks, And they easily go up, depending on, you know, Rode is a great one and, and all that kind of stuff. Now, I don't know the, the name of this one offhand, but it's from China. And you know what? Mm -hmm. it, with the right cable, the cable I'm using now, yeah. we talked about this where I've got the extra plugins and I'm losing dB. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. with just a, 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 an XLR to quarter inch mm -hmm. was an amazing match. And I would say that I have yet to to see something wrong with the shotgun mic. It works like it's supposed to, and I only paid thirty-one dollars. Oh man. Oh man, that's a good price. Yeah. And it's not a piece of junk. It works yeah, very well. Awesome. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, it um, works really good. The first So but 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 to answer your question, mm -hmm. if, if 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 you're starting out, if you if you've got if I if if you can get the link that I give you, mm -hmm. that is a great buy. But at the same time a lapel mic is so useful for other kinds of shoots. Maybe you don't shoot like us. Maybe you don't run and gun like we do. Or, yeah. um, and, and, and it's easy to hide a lapel. Maybe you already have a... See, to me, for the lapel, is you got to have something to plug it into. Yeah. Um, you could plug that straight into uh, your camera. I suppose if your cable's long enough, you could do a lapel and just put it straight mm -hmm. into your camera. Yeah. But I would recommend spending at least... I don't know what brand you... I 
like this Sony brand that I that I have. Yeah. But you can buy a lot of different voice recorders, and they work really good. You use a Zoom H1. Yes. Sir. And that's awesome because it has a, a stereo. If you're just going to use it as a as a recorder, but I yeah. I bet you you don't use it that way very much. I bet you you plug stuff into it and use it as yeah. a recorder. Yeah. See, so it doesn't matter. So mine is a, uh, and then you get a mono signal anyways, and you have to try to um, split it in post. So you're not going to lose anything by buying, say. Uh, going to Walmart and you see a voice recorder in that glass window uh, for 41 bucks. Exactly. You know, buy it because you can plug this lapel in there, get the MP3 off of it, and put it in your movies. Um, that's what we did, but our brand was Sony. And I was saying last time that there's some wizardry in that Sony because we have not yet had anything clip. Nothing's ever too really? quiet. It somehow magically makes everything <laughs> perfect. Yeah. I don't know how. But it does. So with our lapels or the shotgun mic, that is a beast. But I also have proper recorders, and we've played with them. And there's a lot of finessing that you do with these and uh, to get it. But it's like you don't have to mess with nothing with that Sony one. There's something magical about that. Maybe I got two ones that are not supposed to be that way, but they're awesome. <laughs> they're awesome. I think, uh, I think definitely if, uh, if you had to get a piece of audio for your short film, yeah. I would recommend the lapel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very versatile on whatever kind of scene you're getting, besides, like, an action scene. But they do make uh, those one uh, slick plastic covers you can put over lapel so it doesn't have oh, the Oh, yeah, so you don't hear that, that but, uh, clothes ruffle. On yeah, it. but yeah. you can get a close scene, far scene. You can get all kinds of scenes with it, uh, whatever you're trying to shoot. With a uh, shotgun, you you, you got to really judge your scene and where you can place it. You do. Um, so I or, think I think lapel would be the best way to go for starting to do a short film. What would you suggest, Tony? Um, I would go with the lapel into a Zoom H1 only because a Zoom H1 is also a condenser microphone, and it has audio levels on it. And you uh -huh. can get one for about sixty bucks now. Oh, that's not really? bad. That's about the yeah. price I paid for my Sony's. But the yeah. Sony also has a it, it has. It's not stereo, but it has a condenser mic on it too, and oh, uh, like there you go. Yeah, so th that's the thing about that is it, it, it it's meant for one of those um, like college situation yeah. where you yeah. might put it uh, on the table and, and listen to your speaker and, and and play it back, but it but but it's adjustable for the MP3. It's one of the it it can get you to the highest uh, MP3 wave. Mm -hmm. um, that, that I've seen, and so yeah. the quality comes off as far as MP3 goes, the, the best you can For get. For the Sony? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's on. And so I'm really happy with that. So I've used my the, hair pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're trying to do our uh, beer. There you go. Um, oh. But the the Sony, um, the the dynamics of it, it work really awesome. And I, 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 I put it where you could barely notice that it's there, and the, you know, like just mm -hmm. out of the way of the scene. And you could hear me as if it was the camera right there, while well, even though yeah. the camera was actually quite a bit away. So I, I've have really been happy. And then it's what you could do with the zoom too. And this is this this mic is small enough that I could probably hide it easily behind something yeah. too and, and get it to work too. Yeah, I got the uh, Tascam myself. Yeah, the Tascam is an awesome one. That, that that Tascam mm -hmm. reproduces the human voice so good. It if, does. If, if if you if you got the hundred bucks to get that. Um, Mm -hmm. You're gonna get some rich audio it has, off that. Uh, thing. Yeah, and I it, love it. And it has um, the uh, the compressor. Uh huh. Well, it. Yeah, it, and that's something that you want. Like, so we're talking about the Zoom products and the and the Tascam. Yeah. They, they all have that where you can you can limit and compressor and yeah. noise cut, and so you get mm -hmm. you know all those features. The Sony that I've been talking about has the noise cut, but it doesn't have the compressor. Somehow it's all built in, and I don't mm -hmm. know. It's it, there's like I said, there's some magic in it there. Works, it works. It works. Oh yeah. yeah. And I believe the the task I got is is basically just like the Zoom one. Yeah. So where it's like it's just a different brand, but they basically do the same exact thing. Okay. Um, so now the next thing about sound. So I, I'm thinking. So let's let's pretend that that our viewers took our advice. They ran out, got a lapel, got uh, bought this from China. <laughs> for their for their for their super super inexpensive version of a shotgun mic, yeah. I would I would recommend some way nicer mics. But I just got I'm just gonna share that I got super lucky, thirty one bucks, and the thing is awesome. And we yeah. built this little dead cat on there. Um, we went gonna, to the fabric if you, store. If you're gonna spend money on your film, you know you're looking to spend money, and every department is saying you know 
you should spend money here. We're what yeah. you know, breaking, spending on the audio. Yeah, yeah. on the oh, audio. I I agree. If you could, it, yeah, totally. Oh, I want to share with you just for. It's not the show's not about audio, yeah. but I just got my newer LED battery powered lights, mm -hmm. and um, that's why this is on the the thing. I just got it in the mail like an hour ago, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, so this is what our, is lighting our scene right now. Is these right here? Really? Yeah, thirty bucks um, each. My lapel mics and newer light mics. It, it's newer. Um, yeah, yeah, it's newer. <laughs> and um, I pay maybe six dollars for five of them. Wow, you got that many? Nice. Yeah. Ours were from Radio Shack. They weren't um, as as uh, inexpensive as that. But I'm really happy with mm -hmm. the. They were like thirty dollars, thirty five dollars a piece. Them. And uh, but I, I'm really happy with that. The that, that sucks about them. Mm -hmm. Is that the on on off switch on the side is kind of hard to read? Yeah. Oh, and yeah, there's yeah. no indicator to tell you that the battery is low or something. Yeah. So you always have to check. And um, mm -hmm. and uh, one of them, the switch is like it has a little plastic thing, and it mm -hmm. broke off. And so inside of it, you can see the on and off. So you have that little switch. You think you you push it on the off. Yeah, so that's on. one thing. Actually, can... backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Can you guys well, see? See this little lapel mic right here? Um, it's a little cheap ditty from newer, but mm -hmm. um, it works as good as their more expensive models. And I, you can go to Amazon and look them up, and I don't know why they're so cheap. This one right here, I've been using for maybe two years. Oh, nice. Really? Um, so I don't yeah. think their stuff is, is cheap at all. I, uh, I no, mean, no, 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 not, not make-wise, no. no. Price-wise, they're good. Uh, so I'm it's running our, um, our lights right now. I've got this one a little... Uh, a little higher and a little mm -hmm. dimmer on purpose, so we have mm -hmm. a couple of shadows on us. And uh, this one is full brightness right now, and with their and they both have diffusers on them. And it's one of the tests that we're doing tonight, you guys, is I just want to see if by the time we're done talking, if the batteries run out on us. So yeah. I want to kind of wow. test how long the batteries are. I bought the newer batteries that go with it. You could power it with six AA batteries each, and it's cool. There's a little button on there that tells you how the charge is. Yeah. So. So I hope our light doesn't die on that, us. That's not part of the subject that we're doing today, but I just want to share that <laughs> I just picked these up an hour ago, and I'm kind of excited. We're, we're, we're doing our show with it. My right? new toy. Yeah, I got a new toy. Lighting, lighting's very. It came with tiny little stands, yeah. though, ridiculous little stands. Only really, I'm, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. This is how big they are about the stand, and so not very oh. usable unless I need to put it on a table. Yeah. So I'm using the stands I already have. So, but the, it's cool because it comes with a little. Uh, the mount could hook to a tripod, a standard tripod, or yeah. um, or a little cold shoe thingy. Mm -hmm. So you could do that. So anyway, I, I was going to ask you now. So we talked about um, the the viewers bought their lapel mics either from newer or mm -hmm. Radio Shack, or mm -hmm. and they got a voice recorder, uh, either the Zoom or um, a standard voice recorder for college, which they probably already have. Hey, you probably didn't think of that. Use yeah. it for your movies. Yeah. Um, and then uh, possibly a, a, a shotgun mic, which I think is a good idea. Shotgun mics are so handy for yes. filming because they yes. they can pick up from a, a, not a long ways away, but a reasonable distance outside of the camera, and you can get a really good sound. Uh, if, if if you're lucky enough that you got a boom stand or somebody willing to hold a little, you know, mm -hmm. some kind of a boom pole. We maybe one day we'll show you ours. We we made one out of a painter's pole, and we even have a shock mount on it. So we might show you how we built that. Nice. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. But now the next step mm -hmm. is how what music. What what kind of what to do about music for your um, videos? Um, I get a lot of my music. Um, there's a video of pyramids for this short I'm doing that I shared with you guys. I don't know how to share it on Google Hangout, but um, all of that music was free from YouTube. I was going to suggest that we've we've utilized a little bit of music from YouTube too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just not too sure. And, Sure about their, um, like their agreements and crap like that. Like, how, like, I'm sure there's limitations on what you can use their music for. I'm just not yeah. too sure what the limitations are. Um, I don't think you can use it for anything off of YouTube. Just basically YouTube. Yes, but yeah. um, there's plenty of people on YouTube who share their royalty-free music, and all they want is a credit. Yeah. Um, if you can, I mean, if you only have one or two dollars, it's a good donation to make for somebody to use their music from. Um, they usually just ask for credit, but they do a really good job. Um, you don't have to. You can, but you don't have to pay 30, 40 bucks a track. 
Yeah, from, you know, a website where it gives you, you think you're getting the high quality version of the song, and then when you download it, it's like for the high quality you got to pay eighty bucks. And yeah, yeah. Well, I was lucky enough to to browse like the ambient stuff and found some really mm -hmm. something that I could actually use on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, if you guys don't know about this, let's just ex kind of ex quickly explain it. So, when you you you're on your your YouTube account, mm -hmm. you go down to create, and then when you're there, you can see here. you could see the the choices for the um, for music, and there's even sound effects, guys. There's like punches and uh, car horns yeah. and um, all kinds of stuff. Really like, deep, like it's really good audio too. Yeah, people have Sounds submitted like, some um, really de decent. Yeah, stuff. I'm glad Sound. you brought up sound effects because sound effects are so very important. And it's something oh, yeah. that people just forget. You know, the amateur filmmaker, he's already juggling four or five hats, you know, and he's happy to get his good sound. Say he got his lapel mics and everything. Sounds good. But when they go to punch, the punch looks awesome, but there's no there's no punch behind the punch, if you yeah. understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, it's like, oh, here's a... <laughs> it's yeah. like... Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 you guys, you can make since you already have your shotgun mic. Let's say you did that yes. in your voice recorder or, or whatever your field recorder is going to be. You can make your own sound effects. So let's say we're talking about punches. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could experiment with what would sound like a good punch. We can punch somebody and record yeah, it. Or, but um, <laughs> what you could also do is maybe take a stick and smack something and see what it sounds yeah, like. Or something. Smack something like a wet towel. Maybe that doesn't sound right. Maybe smack a watermelon while it's open so you got that squished yeah, sound that, too. Yeah. You, um, you know, you, you, you hit, crack some lettuce together or something and maybe you can get some really good sounds. Make your own sound effects and then make an MP3 mm -hmm. file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and once you make that one sound effect, you can use it for every fourth or fifth punch, you know. Yeah, and you don't have to make a new one for all the punches, sure. No, mm -hmm. no, no. And from now on, whenever you film a punch, you already have the sound. That's You're right. Not trying to it, it. The good thing about filmmaking is once you have something down, you know what you know how to do it. Once you have mm -hmm. chroma key down, you know how to do it. Once you have your sound managed, and it sounds very hard to manage. Mm -hmm. Um. Once you have it down, you're gonna see your level just raise up so much. You'll be making the same videos, but people who said it sucked will start to say it's better. Some people struggle with um, mixing the sound, but uh, I figured the more you play with it, and uh, uh, maybe you listen to stuff that you like, that you like the sound, mm -hmm. and maybe you could practice uh, emulating it when you um, are mixing your video. You can try to go for the sound. Let's say you 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 like. Um, the fight scenes or something of this one video, and you try to get the levels to be the same. You know, emulating somebody that is it, that that you like, I think that's a compliment. You know, to yes. that that person. So if you do yeah. that, um, emulate them or ask them. You know, just if you see it on YouTube, send them a you know a message. Say how'd you get your sound the way it was. I'm pretty sure most people are happy to share. Oh, yeah. I bet they would, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they love, because like you said, it's a compliment to them. Mm -hmm. um, the next important thing about sound is, um, I know a lot of people don't have a clapboard, but when you're syncing your sound, what you're going to have to do if you're using DSLR or sound recorder is this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Without that clap, and I see a lot of people just go straight to filming, without that clap, you're going to be lost. You, That's you're right. gonna be you're gonna be lost. You're gonna be trying to sync up audio from your recorder with the lips or you know, the bad audio from your camera. Things are gonna be off at some point. Mm -hmm. Something's gonna have to be cut. Like if the scene gets cut just a little bit, you're gonna have to try to cut your audio to match it. It's I've done it plenty of times. It's always a mess. Yeah. Um then invest in if you can, invest in an audio mixing program. Some of them are you know, expensive. Some of them are cheaper, but you know, once you take that step that you can afford an audio mixing program, get one. Audio is so very important. Do you mean something like, um, well, there's one that's free. It's called Audacity. Yes, Audacity is what I use actually. Uh -huh. 
And Audacity uh, is great. We also have it's not really an audio program, but it can clean up sound. Mm -hmm. It's um because we bought uh, Audio Lab. Right, Magic's yeah. Audio Lab. Yeah, yeah, that's another good one too. That 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 um, it's not really a, like a multi-layer kind of setup, but you can mm -hmm. clean a channel up. Like if there's some maybe there's a hissy sound on. that that you want to get but rid it, of, but uh, it can get rid of it. it. It cleans up audio very well. Yeah, it's like if you recorded something and you have. Just a horrible hissing noise in the in the background. That's either from something mm -hmm. that's actually there, or it's that just, damn it's just refrigerator. The, uh, we might be able to get yeah. rid of that. Or if it's just uh, just a hiss from the um, the program on the recorder or whatever have you, it cleans them up very well. And I'm yeah. very impressed with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's not free, but it wasn't like horribly expensive. What was it like? Yeah, yeah, sixty bucks. Yeah, yeah. It, and that's not bad, folks. Mm -hmm. For audio, for good audio. That's not bad. It's, like I said, it's you know, worth it. It's, it's, it's worth it 100%. Audio is the one point you don't want to skimp out on. I know we try to be frugal. I know we try to, you know, do it yourself a lot of things. But um, audio, audio is so important. And how to I, utilize audio. Yeah. Uh, back, back to music. Mm -hmm. um, we... we um, so, so we know that with YouTube, there's... A lot of choices on there, but you might still be unsatisfied. It's like this isn't the kind of ambience and of music that I need for my my sketches. Um, there, the there's music on there. Well, let's say you there's a, there's they even offer hit songs um, mm -hmm. that you could use, but there's um, uh, payoffs where yeah uh, you can't monetize your video and it won't yeah. play at some countries. But there's your hit song, whatever you know, whoever it may be. But so there's but 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 for us we don't really care about having hit songs on there. We want background music. We want ambience. We want the tension builder stuff. And YouTube has some of it. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is is I'm lucky that we have uh, score fitters. Is that Pro what they scores? call it? Pro scores. Well, we have that. But uh, what's with Pinnacle? It's uh, the score oh, yeah. fitter. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it's called. I but think it, it's called it, it score comes, fitters. It comes with Pinnacle. The um, Video editing program, mm -hmm. and uh, basically, it, it it you can actually say your your uh, your clip is thirty seconds long, and it'll take this song that you want, and it'll readjust it, it'll it'll render it for that thirty seconds. Yeah, so, so it'll like, end perfect. So it'll actually end where it's supposed to. Yeah. So you got, I mean, there's uh, literally like a lot of choices for. I mean, you got something for every. Country. So, if you want something yeah. that's in Italy, then you got your, you know, your Italy songs. You got your Irish stuff. Then you got your like suspension sounds. You got your ambience. You got your climax. You got your, you got your action stuff. It's like it's, it's all right there. And so it mixes, it mixes it for you. Um, it, it mixes it for you for the length that you need it, and it'll mm -hmm. actually end like at the end of the clip, right where you need. It. I use it a lot. Yeah. But my latest little short film. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Are You Ready? I didn't use that at all. I used, um, we got um, uh, Video Copilot Pro Scores. It, yeah. it, it's like 200 bucks to, to buy that. So right. that's it's only 100. Is it only 100? Yeah, it's only 100. So, so it's a little bit of an investment, but I, uh, the choices that you get from that, because it's all from each, each style is all from the same orchestra. So, yeah. If you start using Pro Scores, you've got quite a gamut of of sounds that you might need. So you got uh, where it sounds like it's a, a build up to finally an end. So yeah. you got all, and you can choose the the chord or the note that that is. And there's all kinds of styles in there. And then there's like, well, if you watch um, our Are You Ready, mm -hmm. you can see how I utilized about. There's about five or six, maybe seven different things from Pro Scores on there, and really? it totally fit what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I had to sit there and search through a bunch of stuff, and, and I, when I like something, I put it on my desktop. I searched some more, spent about an hour trying to search through stuff, and I put them on my desktop until I was happy with. I think these things will fit in here, and then when I put them in there and play it. I was happy with the vibe I was getting from that. It's like, okay, that's staying in there. And then I just set the volume and we're good. So Pro Scores was, I think it helps make your videos 
seem more professional because the music fits yeah. what you're trying to do, especially if it's kind of a suspenseful um, thing like we were trying to do. I just like the fact that it's, it seems like it's a full orchestra. Yeah. So yeah. it's a very full sound. Um, there's a lot of free music out there that it's awesome. It's free and whatnot, but it's all symphonic. I mean, Midi and, yeah. There's like maybe two instruments into it. And it's like... Yeah, and it's like, and that just... Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, but if you get, get a chance to, like, to, to, to buy it, well, I don't mm -hmm. um, if you can... Yeah. I think it's if it's a hundred bucks. I think it's worth the hundred bucks. Yeah. Because you can do so. I, I I'm imagining twenty more short films from that we'll be doing, and we'll yeah. still be using It'll the be. stuff from Video yeah. Copilot Pro Scores. <laughs> I want to touch on something you said or earlier about the sound tying together. Um, a lot of the times when you watch a video on YouTube and it's a short film and it's you know still long enough to where it has different scenes with different music. Um, mm -hmm. You can tell that they kind of mishmashed whatever they could find together. And your sound is like your your sound is like your video. Your um, video it has to flow together. Mm -hmm. It has to it has to go together. If you have a discombobulated you know one band from over here and one band from over there, it's going to kill the flow of your movie. Yeah. You know quicker than having Act One and then Act Three and then Act Two. I agree. You don't want it to just cut, cut, cut. I I, I made that mistake when I uh, we were in a hurry when we did our z zombie ep uh, where we had the zombie makeup on. Yeah. And uh, that that day, I mean, the video people might think, oh, you guys don't know what you're doing because I the way I edited that video, I just wanted mm -hmm. to slap it out and just cut, cut, cut mm -hmm. because it was all about the makeup and I wanted to hurry up and get this makeup off. So then when we did, I just. So we shot it without shotgun mic. We shot it without lapels. We just shot it with the camera uh, audio. It didn't turn out that bad, but you, you really can really on. hear when it goes from one scene to another because the sound really yeah. changes. When you do it right, it seems like it just flows. Mm -hmm. But when you just cut from one scene to another, you can really hear the sound change. So that that's an example of bad... Um, editing? Bad yeah. editing? Bad, bad, bad sound editing. Bad, bad sound mixing. Bad That's planning, <laughs> all that. Yeah, a good way. A, fun. A good way to get around that though is to get the rooms, room noise. Yeah, well, uh, I did do that, but it didn't help. <laughs> and, uh, when you when you put it in there, when it bleeds into the next scene, mm -hmm. you, you have that room noise. Like you have this scene, you have this scene, and you got your room noise right between those two scenes, and you bleed them into each other. That way, yeah. it, it kind of flows with it. Even though it will change into the next scene, but yeah. it should flow it nicely enough to where it it's might not be noticeable. smooth enough to yeah, smooth it out. Yeah, you're not completely noticing it. But like with the music thing, where uh, you, you know you got this this upbeat, happy music, then all of a sudden it's not even a different scene or nothing. It just goes to a different point of view, and it just goes down to a like a low beat kind of yeah. sad music, and it's like, okay, um, that would be bad. Yeah, how, that's how, like, how that's supposed to be feeling. Am I? Happy? Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, did this person just get bad news, or what's going on? And but he's still dancing around. I don't get it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I can see. Yeah, that can. That so, can so you need it. to plan your music for sure. How the scene is going to go. So when you're, when when you when you brainstorm in your story, uh, a lot of times music is like the uh, the last thought that I have. So I'm planning my story. We're, sto we're talking about our story. Mm -hmm. and uh, we're thinking about the vibe of the whole thing, and so I do maybe feel moody, but I'm not even thinking about music yet. Mm -hmm. That actually comes last. Maybe I should start putting that up in the front so they see, see if I even have this kind of music to match this oh, awesome yeah. idea we have. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily, with because I edit with Pinnacle, the 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 library of, of, of audio music that's automated um, is, is awesome. I actually mm -hmm. utilize that. First, if I don't have it there, then I look with my other libraries. But that is definitely a, a great way to plan your your movie. Mm -hmm. Is like what sound can you offer? So we touched on sound effects, mm -hmm. um, the how how to mic your your stuff up because mm -hmm. you might maybe you want to use a, a mic like this or a lapel mic. Mm -hmm. But then you're going to have to have music, and if you get all these together, this is going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. a lot of times when I. Uh, yeah start to think of a story, I, I usually use music as the inspiration. So I'm listening to something, whatever I'm listening to, and then that kind of creates the story for me. So If you hear music, sometimes it can make you think of things. Mm -hmm. Like, I've heard music. Another, another um, 
uh, thing that I have is tubetape.com. Mm-hmm. They have music, and one of them that um, that I have is Cinematic Music Elements, mm -hmm. and I've used at least half of that library on some of my stuff. Um, the rest of it, I, I, it just doesn't fit my my thing. But there's mm -hmm. a there's a lot of good stuff in there. Yeah, it's, so that's when, actually where you can get the uh, pro scores from too. Yeah, when I listen to 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 some of the tracks on there, I actually think of some stuff like, man, this seems like an action scene where like there's like a guy running on the top of a train while the train's moving and he's being chased by another guy with a gun. He's like, you get that kind of action feel. Yeah. Like that could inspire you know you to to make a a, a short film. Yeah. But um, but so far we haven't been doing that, so that's <laughs> that track hasn't come up. Yeah. Well, it's like when I'm listening to music, right? Mm -hmm. And when the song changes to the next one. It all it changes the whole story in my head, so it's like it's all sad, kind of well not sad but kind of like really mellow. So it's like, oh, this is a happy time. Okay, so at this point in the story, it's all happy. Then the, the next song turns on, and it's all fast paced and action. It's like, okay, this is an action part in my yeah, my memory cool. movie story. <laughs> so um, yeah, another good tip is the less you show with the camera, the more you should tell with the music. Um, mm. Take, for instance, you have a suspense scene, there's a killer in the house, and your camera is on the lady in the closet. You really can't see what's going on, but you hear the footsteps, you hear the music, you know, it's duh, duh, duh. You hear, uh, yeah. you, you hear the door creaking open. All of that is sound being more important, actually, than the video you're shooting. Yeah. So the less you show, you can have a blank screen if you don't want to show blood and they're killing or something. You can have it fade to black in the scream, and then there's a there's a horror sting right there, and there's a slashing sound, and you get away with a PG rating instead of a R or X rating. Yeah, right, because you're not you're not showing it. You're mm -hmm. just it's it's implied. It's you, your imagination yeah, goes. It's, that's what they mm -hmm. said about Jaws. Is that when they made the movie Jaws, they they made this this the great big Jaws, but they had the 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 shark. They had a lot of difficulties making it um, making it work right. So to mm -hmm. get around it, they shot on purpose, not showing it very much. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. the imagination of this ginormous, terrible creature in the water was more in your imagination. Like that scene where the girl was swimming in the water, and she was pulled under by the shark. You didn't see it at all. No. But no. Uh, but the music. The whole led up to it, it. Yeah. and mm -hmm. your imagination. You, some people would say, "I saw the shark. Oh, I saw it. I was watching it." And but it does it, not really there. But your imagination yeah. said you have seen it. You know, yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, because um, people's um, imagination mm -hmm. can come up with a lot better scenes than uh -huh. what we can put in movies. <laughs> um, <laughs> a movie that used sound when that used music when you know the audio wasn't going to be that great was Conan the Barbarian. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Go watch Conan. Watch how many you know how many lines he says. But when not very many. That, yeah, not very many because you know he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. But when yeah. you hear that do 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 do, you know, you know, you know it's Conan. You know you're gonna get action and slashing and um. That's the movie where sound carried it. That's the movie yeah. where sound carried it. Oh, yeah. the music with the the sound the scores on that was really good. <laughs> And oh, uh, of course, the, um, the, I don't know. Yeah, man? I, I wouldn't be able to tell you really? this or no, but um, but the, I just remember that I loved the music for it. It every mm -hmm. single track for every scene fit perfect, fit and perfect. it was awesome. And the the fact that he didn't speak much, I kind of liked that because. You know, um, his character was sort of a an inside guy. You know, where he was, was deep, and so that that made that made sense to me. And I didn't it didn't bother me that he didn't have a lot of lines, even though it was all about Conan. But yeah. his friends were kind of the thing that that the, the, the people that surround him sort of made his character move yeah. on. So that 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 was kind of cool. So the director probably knew that I don't like hearing you speak, nobody can understand what you yeah. say, so we'll work around that. <laughs> yeah, we'll work around but, that. But it's like, um, what was it, Hercules Goes to New York had Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. I think it was like one of his earlier films where he couldn't <laughs> speak English very well, so his voice was dubbed through the entire thing. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> that made the movie for me, because at that point in time, I was already an Arnold Schwarzenegger fan, 
And I'm watching this, and it's like not even his voice, but it's just it's funny to watch him act <laughs> with somebody <laughs> else's voice. Um, Rocky was another sound movie where you know the sound and the music and the impact, the sound effects were very important to making that movie work. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, do you make do you make your own sound effects too, Tony? Yes, I make my All own right. sound effects. Um, Rocky Sylvester Stallone was also one of the creators of the glide cam we all use now. You know the stabilizer. No kidding. Yes. Yeah. Rocky. That movie, I, the first Rocky. Wow. Yeah. I uh I, I I have my sights on one. Yeah. It's about about a hundred bucks, but um I'm I'm wondering now since I used well out in the out of running around I, I would need one, but with just in the house I used our camera jib to simulate the uh, uh, kind of the a handheld. glide cam yeah. handheld look. What did you think of that? Did you see that, Tony? I did. I liked it. Um, if you guys haven't checked out their last most recent short yet, it's very good. You can. I don't. I don't want this to sound like you guys suck before, but you guys are progressing greatly. And I'm not saying that I'm better than you guys. No, you guys make a lot more content than I do. But um. I really, I really like this last short they did, and um, you guys should check it out if you can. Well, thank you, Tony. Yeah, we had a blast making that. So, uh, it 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 was something I, I wanted to try. With we made a, a homemade camera jib, and uh -huh. it uses a, a a tripod for uh, a PA speaker, and we put a, a lazy Susan on it, and, yeah. it, and we used a couple of monopods and a whole bunch of L brackets for for shelf. Stuff. Yeah. I think we talked about it last week. I think we did. So, yeah. so we got that. And uh, but I, I wanted to use the camera jib not for your crane shots that you typically see, where you could rise up way high and see all that. Um, you know, the height of everything. It's like that's what it's really good for. Mm -hmm. But instead, I wanted to use it um, down where it's supposed to be. Well, we, I I did do a table shot. So we, what we did is we angled it down uh, at the table mm -hmm. and had it, and I moved it across the table to. To, to see where William, his character's name is Richard, yeah. where he's finally sitting and got woke up by the radio. And I, I we, we spent some time trying to light that just the right way so you can see the zombie stuff that he's been paying attention to on mm -hmm. the table. And um, our uh, my stepdaughter, Abby, was uh, taking charge of um, the set design, so she wanted to make sure the right books were there. Mm -hmm. So everything that's on that table was on purpose. It wasn't yeah. just a mess. And, and that's how it's supposed to be. Um, everything mm -hmm. on your set should be set by your set designer. I said set a lot. Um, you don't want any clutter that you don't know what's going on either way because you, somebody's going to trip. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I purposely, if you, now you can, if you look for this now, so if there's a little thing, to, a little Easter egg to look for. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you saw when William walks into the living room and he, 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 he picks up the radio, and then he picks up his gun. Well, if you yeah. look on the table, too, there's other things. There's a battery. There's some other stuff. But there's some, some kitty treats mm. there, too. And that would make sense because even though the lights were on when the zombie walks in front of the lights and my yeah. cat is... She's <laughs> been in, like, so many of our videos. Yeah. And even though th that I, as a director, if it was another place, I would have made sure the cat's not in the shot. But the, um. uh, so many of our videos... Our cat is always there. It's like, why get rid of her? So as soon as she's there, she's, she don't care about no zombies. So <laughs> she's so, a camera hog. Is what so she there's is. a there's a cat there. There's kitty treats on the table, so it makes sense. But one thing that I'm going to start paying attention to, because I watched, it, I just noticed it today. When you when you walked in the one time, the camera pans to you, and you can see the clock. So it shows one time. And just moments later, when it goes from the <laughs> from the, the the window when the lights come on back to you, it's an hour later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Oops. we'll have to take the battery out of the clock when we start shooting in the living room from now for for some serious shorts. We have to yeah. pay attention yeah. to that. Um. Yeah. You when when you're starting out like us, so you're just chugging along like um the guys that mixed in are. You're not going to have a continue continue um. 
You're not going to have the person. Conti continuity? Continuity, yeah. thank you. I, I, I want to pay attention to continuity, though. It's, it's starting to make sense to me. So I got. You want to make sure that your refrigerator's turned off, unplug, take the battery out of your clocks. <laughs> when you have a two-part scene, you have one guy talking to the other guy talking. One guy's talking and the refrigerator's on. Yeah. The other guy talks, it's all dead silent. <laughs> you don't want to do one that. One guy talks, the refrigerator's on. And there's even a bagel cooking in the microwave. It's like <laughs> it's hard to pay attention to that, but w you you need to kind of keep that in the back mind of the, um, when you're starting to do I serious can, stuff. Uh, 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 um, big budget movie that was bad about that was Ninja Turtles, the most recent Ninja Turtle movie. Oh no, kidding! I haven't seen it, but William said he did. Yeah. Um, when she first sees the Foot Clan, in one scene it's raining, and in the scene after that it's not raining, in the scene. After that, it's raining, raining again, and then the scene after that is not raining. Um, she's supposed to be recording the foot soldiers, and she has the camera set to show her face. And worst of all, before that, she's there's a scene where she's jumping on a trampoline, and she has on like a black sweater, and then when she gets off the trampoline, it's a pink sweater. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. No. How did I miss oh. that? Um, so, so do you go to the movies looking for continuity? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Okay, but when it's that obvious? No, no. It was to me because after you notice it one time, it's just like with audio. If you notice one audio error, it starts to click in your mind and start listening for others. Right. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. Like, an, like another issue that I had was when my camera jib watched William walk away from the table... Mm -hmm. My uh, shotgun mic that was uh, the poised at the table to hear him picking up stuff. I mean, though he he didn't have a lot. He had one line. He said one thing, and I rocked it. Oh yeah, <laughs> he was on it. But um, the 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 shotgun fuzziness right here was somehow in the shot. I didn't oh, see it. That <clears throat> it barely noticed. I didn't see it until I went over it and over it, doing all my editing and color correcting and all that stuff. And I after ten times, like what the. <laughs> I could totally now I see it. Like I hope nobody else sees it. Yeah, yeah. Somebody will. You won't notice it. Um yeah. in this little I did this little pyramid video, like I mentioned earlier, it's not that good. It was just I, I, I watched that. I thought uh, the that the graphics that you used and your zoom in and the music for it, mm -hmm. that was pretty awesome. But like you mentioned before, <laughs> that uh, establishing a scene you, you would want to probably just do just do a really very, very Yeah, quick one. very but you, very briefly. Um, but you're just kind of showing what you can do, and then it's like, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. some, might as well show it for a few seconds. Yeah, it looks great. Um, the first pyramid is transparent. <laughs> oh, yeah? You can yeah. see it. Yeah, you can only notice it if you're looking at the leftmost corner in the sand, but you can see the sand through the pyramid. Did you say that that was a, a cardboard one that you made? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, where is that thing at? It's over there. <coughs> I'll, I can show it later on. Um, it's the same pyramid, by the way. That's the same pyramid. I took it with a 50 millimeter. I took it with a um, 28 millimeter, and I took it with a 138 millimeter. And each pyramid looks different. Oh, because you used a different lens. Oh, mm -hmm. clever. That's cool. Because mm -hmm. I was going to say that they look like three different pyramids, all different lengths away from you. It looks really good. Yeah. It was. Yeah, it was one pyramid, and mm -hmm. that's the way you can save on making props and stuff like that. Um. Change the lens and you get a whole different outlook on the same on the same scene. It's but lenses are expensive and that's not what we're talking about today. We yeah, I mean uh, we 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 don't have much luck with like a variety of lenses with the, the gear that we have right now. We're kind of <laughs> um, kind of limited to what what, what, we, what we can do. But but at the same time, with knowing what lenses we have, we'll mm -hmm. shoot our 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 episodes that. I guess that can handle what we have when we start accumulating more stuff. And learn about the lenses, then we might start making more episodes that will utilize those tools. But right now, we're just going to stay with what we have until mm -hmm. our budget can change. But yeah, yeah, like you said before, I think our if, if when you're beginning, I think you should spend a lot on sound because sound first, yes, yeah, get your sound gear and established. Not, not only buying the gear because I don't want I don't want people to fall into well, it's not sounding right because I don't have this specific mic, or it's not sounding right because I don't have, you know, this specific audio recorder. Um, sound takes practice. Oh yeah. It takes oh, we've made a lot practice. of mistakes. Mm -hmm. we, we 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 struggled with with sound, but I I persevered because I was a musician, and yeah. 
when when one day that I was in the studio recording our 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 band was recording, and I was actually more infatuated with the sound engineer guy. Mm-hmm. That's like I think I just found what new job I want to do. It's like I don't even want to play the guitar for this track. Or I want to watch you do stuff. It's like okay, yeah. but uh, but you know that being said, been said, but I have a fascination with sound and how to try to. I like leveling things out. I I I I, I don't have the best reference speaker system, but I do have that on my uh, on my. Amazon account. I have a huge wish list right now. Okay, just uh, the, the, and then there's some speakers in there that I want. But uh, but reference speakers and and sound design is important. And and I think we do a pretty good job of trying to um, uh, equalize and and level things out and have good rich sound so that you guys can enjoy our videos and and not struggle through the sound where you have to turn it up or turn it down. Where we try to keep everything level. And I, th- I think if you kind of grasp that when you're making your videos, you don't want your music to be suddenly like way too loud, yeah. especially if you're trying to have some sound. Maybe you want it loud, and, and it, it doesn't matter that you don't want to hear him pick something up off the table or whatever. Mm-hmm. Th- that's fine if that was the sound design. But if it's if if either the things that you're doing in the video are distracting bad, then then that's probably bad sound design. So you want everything to be you know how. how leveled out and how it's supposed to be. You, But that takes practice. It takes a lot of practice. Um, you want to you want to be able to grade your sound, so to speak. You know how you grade an image? Um, sure. Take, for instance, there's a scene. I mean, we're, we're making a vampire movie, okay? There's a scene where the vampire picks out his victim. He, it's a pretty lady, you know, she's dancing on the other side of the club. And um, he whispers. And she can hear him from the other side of the club because you know that's what vampires do. Yeah. Um, you're gonna want his whisper to come in clearer than the audio in the background, and that's gonna take sound manipulation. You know what I might do for that? Mm-hmm. ADR. There you go. There you go. Do ADR, and um, you can dub it over the sound. And once you do ADR, it frees you to manipulate sound, the voice and the background sound in any way you want to without being stuck on one track. We had yeah. to do ADR one time. It mm-hmm. wasn't by choice, but it just had to kind of work out that way. So mm-hmm. we did um, our My MI Home Invasion. We mm-hmm. ADR'd almost every line that we said mm-hmm. on that whole episode. We brought the shotgun mic yeah, to really. um, G2 Studios, which is where I work. They allowed me to use the whole warehouse to shoot what we wanted. And so I brought the green screen, and we went out there, and we spent the whole afternoon, and we shot My Home Invasion, because mm-hmm. we had lots of elbow room. And we brought the, the shotgun mic, but for some reason, the, the sound wasn't... No, we had fans going on. We had, there, there was there was yeah. um, a guy doing cleaning outside the shop with the with the big machine yeah. like the truck <laughs> that sweeps the parking lot. Yeah. yeah. yeah so there's a whole audio. bunch of sound in the background. So we ADR'd all the lines. So we said them, you know, but they're crap. But then we we redid it at home, yeah. and we're ha- it wasn't that easy because I mean it was easy to speak at about the same pace and everything, but to try to get the audio to sound like it belonged there it was a little bit mm-hmm. tricky. William messed with that mostly on on that one, but oh, I pity that's you. A, <laughs> that's a good. That's a good uh, method good to practice. to get yeah. back your good audio is to do it later. I think if you have to do ADR, um, I know uh, uh, Film Riot. They talk a lot about it. Is yeah. like listening to it over and over again. But I think you have to really get back into the mindset that your character was in. Because mm-hmm. if you're, yeah. you know, if, yeah. if it's an intense scene and whatnot, you don't want to be like, oh my God, they're coming after us. Oh, you, you got to get back into that that frame of mind and, and say it at the same tone, I guess. What's crazy is that some movies were all ADR. They they said what yeah. they said, and uh, then they did the entire movie ADR. It's like God, that would be like that would be rough. Yeah, um, sitcoms do that a lot. Sitcoms have I don't yeah. know why, but sitcoms have a lot of dropped audio. So there's a lot of ADR for um situation, you know, living room sitcoms. Um, those actors and actresses are very good at mimicking themselves, so to speak. Um, wow, well, that, that's clever. Yeah. That's lucky yeah. for them. Yeah, 
Um, that's why you see a lot of TV actors when they make the jump to movies. It's usually voice acting and animations and stuff like that. Yeah. But um. Okay, so for indie makers, mm -hmm. you you need to consider that what you shoot, if you can't get it right on set. You might be able to ADR it, which means record it after the fact, watching your yeah. your playback. In case you don't know what ADR is, I can't remember what the they all the ADR stands for, but like odd, odd, um, it stands audio, for in hell. <laughs> automated, uh, you know, dynamic reproduction or something. Anyway, so you you, you redo it, or oh, and then uh, make sure you get it, 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 it. What we would encourage you to do is maybe get a decent. Um, lapel mic, and uh, Tony suggested something from newer, which mm -hmm. is very inexpensive. And obviously, you're getting a good quality. If yeah. if you can't wait for that, you can run to your Radio Shack. They might have the lapel mic that we get. They don't come with the little um, uh, foam uh, thing on there. Yeah. But right next to it is a four pack of the foam things you get add on there. Yeah. At Radio Shack, for like. Five bucks. So, there you go. And that's what we did. Automatic dialogue replacement. That's what ADR is. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Thank you, William. No problem. Okay. Uh, and, and if and if you got the money, then go and buy an awesome shotgun mic. If you don't really have a ton of money, I'll put a link in the description about this shotgun mic that I think is pretty awesome. It would so really thirty-one bucks, guys. Good, uh, that's totally affordable to have yeah. awesome. If you're able to, I definitely recommend both. Yeah, uh, get both. And shotgun. Because then every just remember when you're recording and you try and pick one and stick with it. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, the mixing of it. The, would be every situation difficult. should be covered if you've got one one of each. Yeah. Uh, a voice recorder or um, so I'm 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 saying the Sony IC whatever that number is of the yeah. Sony voice recorder that that mm -hmm. I use yeah. I think is magical. For sixty bucks, yeah. you can also get the Zoom H2 or the Zoom H1, yeah. which is uh, obviously a, 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 a worldwide choice for um, a single mic input. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's going to be the eighth inch mini, yeah, um, and you, and you can totally dial in your uh, compressor um, and noise gate and stuff like that. Let people choose not to use the noise cut; just leave that off. You can do that in post. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also have the Zoom H two N, which has the same input. But if you use the mic for itself, it it actually can record in surround sound, not just stereo. You can do actually. I can do a lot more. It, it's really yeah, awesome. It has a what lot this of yeah. can do. It's, it's, more. it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's well, it was not that much more than the Zoom H one. Mm -hmm. I think. Without the accessories, yeah. I think it was like 125. Um, but I it, it was more than that. I, I think. Uh, oh, you're right. I think it was 175. And then you add the accessories and it put it to about a 200 thing. And the accessories were nice, like a remote control and all kinds of stuff. Little stand. And this little stand that it's on. <laughs> uh, and then we built. Well, it came with a little foam uh, windscreen, mm -hmm. but then we did one of these to it with a little fuzzy. Um, so it's, it actually works outside with the wind, for real wind. It actually yeah. covers it. Uh, so you don't get all that sound. It's yeah. terrible. And that's very important. So, so, yeah. So, so, so you get your, so, so you get your um, audio figured out that way. Mm -hmm. I think then you're ready to start. If you've got a... We, have, we talked last week about your camera gear. So yeah. you, let's say you've figured out your camera. This is what you should do to, to at least start with your audio. And... And that's where we're at. Where we haven't figured out what the next audio step is going to be. We're we're mm -hmm. still trying to. I mean, when one of these things breaks, I guess is when we're going to pick something new. But right now, our Radio Shack lapel mics are just fine. Yeah. We bought two of them. We got two Sony voice recorders, so that that way. Side note, we could put a voice recorder on him and a lapel on him. Put a voice mm -hmm. recorder on me and a lapel on me. My. We're actually wireless. <laughs> anyway, what we do is we, we, we've got the camera running, everything's running, we all try to start them at approximately the same time, okay, one, two, three, go, and then we do this. <laughs> and when I see those spikes on our, uh, uh, when we're doing our editing, I line them all up, mute the mic from the camera, and now we're just lapel mics. That is awesome. My Wireless. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's exactly. nice about that. Um, you, lost, you lost your video there? Yeah. Uh, so, so after after that, 
you guys, then you, I think that your sound, uh, as far as recording stuff, I think you got it covered. Um, look at YouTube for some free music. If you don't find what you're looking for there, you might still find some royalty-free stuff that all you got to do is, is credit the, the owner that you're using it. And if, that's, if you're still not finding what you want there for free, consider going to tubetape.com, mm -hmm. and they've got what I think is good stuff to make cinematic-style um, short videos. you got your um, uh, cinematic music elements is one. Yeah. I think that's around 50 or $60 dollars. Pro scores is probably closer to a hundred dollars. Yeah, okay. I haven't looked at the price in a little while because I haven't needed to buy it again. I already have it. <laughs> so, but that's pretty awesome. I'm really happy with Pro scores. You, you can make some really the, cool stuff. What's a uh, Film Riot store? Oh yeah, Film Riot um, has made a music package that you could buy. They did. Yeah, and because they used it for some of their latest ones, and they're making it so you could buy you could buy sound effects from them too. Mm -hmm. You get, so, yeah, you can get all. You can actually get quite a bit of stuff. I don't know if we're going to be able to come up with a link to it, but go to Film Riot. Yeah, and uh, you know the guy. Yeah, and and you could you could scroll through some of the videos, and when he talks about that, he's got the. Uh, you could download or you could purchase the uh, the music package that he's got. I'm considering the sound effects for sure, but I'm actually actually kind of half considering the music package, mm -hmm. even though I'm really happy with Pro Scores. I think I'm going to look at some of the music packages that they've got too. So that's pretty cool because you can you can really like probably dial in even let's say if I've got both, I could really dial in really, exactly yeah. what we're doing with our uh, uh, with our video stuff. So yeah, right now for Pro Scores, you can get it from Two Tape for eighty nine dollars. Oh, eighty nine bucks. So bad. less than a hundred bucks. Yeah, not bad at all. And uh, there's a few other ones on here too. Uh, rock alternative, cinematic music elements. Yeah, I have the cinematic music elements, and like I said, I, I, I've utilized probably about drama, half so. of that. Mm -hmm. The rest of it is, just so. doesn't fit my um, my style. That, but still, half of that is great. Yeah. Oh, it's more um, than great. You get what you pay for. Okay. I, th I think it's worth I it. I mean, it is a lot of money, especially when you're thinking about spending $100 on music. Yeah. It's like, but but you know, what you're getting out of it is a lot, because not only do you get... Like uh, normally, when you have one track of the music, they give you multiple different tracks of it. Some of them have percussion. Um, then it's some of them like like they take the whole thing, and they break it down to percussion. Um, yeah, chorus, yes, you can separate it. You could separate so you can it. Whatever I think that's really like. cool. Then you got hits, snares, mm -hmm. uh, drum rolls, and they even have some with reverb. I mean, there's there's a whole mixture of stuff inside of it you can use. Yeah. So if if you're a, a an indie filmmaker that's uh, willing to spend um, you know a little bit of money to to to, to make it uh, more professional, then I, I think this paying what you're paying for these items is yeah. definitely worth it. There's 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 so many other choices out there, guys. But I, I don't know what I, I haven't researched uh, everything. But when I stumbled across these, I thought this is what I'm looking for. Yeah. And it's actually quite affordable, so yeah. I'm just going to pass that on to you guys. 2,500 sound effects for $100. For how much? Uh, $100. So $100. 2,000 2000 sound effects, guys. 2,500, yeah. I'm, wow, 2,500 bucks, or 2,500 sound effects. I'm sure you're going to find something that you yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's really decent stuff, too. You're not going to yeah. find something that's... Well, hey, you got your body video back. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to find stuff that's really muffled, because I know like a lot of sound effects I find... It's free, but it's like it sounds like they recorded it inside a basement. Yeah, and sometimes quality, quality, but they, yeah. they had the mic underneath water. Quality is not top notch. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you got the you know whatever you're looking for the car horn or yeah or whatever. But uh, so yeah, so give us give us some some last words, Tony, for if you're an indie filmmaker mm -hmm. and you're starting out mm -hmm. and we're talking about sound. Mm -hmm. What do they need to know? Um, after you get your sound set up and you're working on sound, um, practice your sound theory. Once you start storyboarding, which is another step that's very important, so always storyboard oh, yes. when you can. Um, write in the mood for each scene you're shooting, and think of music. Oh. Yeah, 
Yeah, right in Good the mood. Good point. Yeah. You're shooting and thinking music that would fit that mood. That's um, a good point. That is, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. Um, the next thing would be, don't add a song that you like if it doesn't fit the theme of your short. Yeah, it's not going to help the movie any. Huh? It's not yeah. going to. You, you're you're going to like you know the music, <laughs> but it's not going to fit your short at all. Yeah. You're going to like it, but I'm not too sure yeah, if anybody else is going to like it. <laughs> um, sound and music, it makes or break your film. It really makes or break your film. Um, mm-hmm. The music during the credits at the beginning, it sets the tone for your whole short. I and agree. Please, please have music at the beginning of, you know, if, say if you're having a YouTube channel, um, get your intro, you know, make your intro, and have a music, have a sound effect that becomes your jingle. Mm-hmm. You know, when you hear that sound, people think of your brand. Yeah. And, yeah. And that way, they know what they're getting. As soon as they hear that noise, they say, oh, this guy does that. I know he's good at what he does. I'm going to stay to watch the video. Yeah. Because most people, I think, maybe after five seconds, they decide if they're going to watch the whole video or not. Yeah, we, we, we have that. We have a little brown brand thing. Mm-hmm. We have the, uh, the M that the eye turns around, and when it closes, you hear that giant metallic door closed yes. sound when it happens. Yeah. And I, I, I decided to do that instead of the 30 second intro thing that I used to do for all of our give it a shot stuff. It's like, yeah, th- that that's fun, but uh, people just kind of want to, they probably skip through that anyways just to get to the damn video. <laughs> so I made our I made our intro very, very short. Very short, yeah. It's something I have to do as well. My intro is too mm-hmm. long. But, um, and if you do, if you do something where you shoot your movie before thinking about music. Um, pick pick music that flows well together. You know, you want your music to tell a story as much as your video to tell a story. I don't want to say it's kind of like a play, but it's kind of like a play. Yeah, they have to work together. Well, it has it, to be it, almost it, kind of considerate. Yeah, your your last talent. Yes. So you got all your talent performing, mm-hmm. doing their acting, and that to me can really kill it. I mean, they can have awesome audio, great sound effects, but if the if yeah. if the talent is terrible at acting, it, I can't get into it. But, yeah, that's really. Uh, yeah, I, I have to agree. Then, oh man, I, have I seen that a few times? Yeah. Yes. Then you get, then you can consider your audio afterwards as your last talent. So yeah, yeah. that that can really break it right there. Yeah, so I I hope that that you guys um, have taken a few nuggets from from what we've said tonight, and uh, and uh, thank you Tony for joining us again for our, our mixed in Google Hangouts thank about you for having me again. Oh, yeah. you're so welcome. I mean, we're g- hopefully <laughs> hopefully we can do this a few more times. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe this will just be an every Friday thing because we're you know yeah. just, we're both making. Um, we are working on stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we try to keep some content going every every week. Tomorrow mm-hmm. um, we're shooting something. We're adding a new our, member. Our really? Oh, we're adding a new member. His yeah. name is Jesus. Yes. Uh, that might not be his character name, but his real name is Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so he's <laughs> going to be a. <laughs> so finally, we might actually get uh, somebody else to act in our uh, short films besides just me. And <laughs> Yeah, 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 and yeah. Um, that's really good. Like I, I try to stay as far behind the camera as I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the that was the point of, of me wanting to start the show. Is that I want to produce. I, I want to be. Uh, I want to make the show happen. I couldn't get anybody to to step in front of the camera, so I guess that's got to be me for right now. Yeah. But you know what? I, I no no regrets. I've had a blast, but. The day will come where I'm just going to be behind the camera making it happen. I, uh, I I'm not really a I'm a musician, not an actor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, but uh, oh. anyways, mm-hmm. so thanks for watching, uh, you guys, and uh, Thank you. thanks for joining us, Tony. Mm-hmm. And it's been awesome. Yeah. So next week, um, uh, let's instead we'll let's just uh, yeah <laughs> we we're going to talk about props and and and, and Tony. You know, he he went out and he did a whole bunch of cool stuff about you know his preparation for props, but that's not what we ended up talking about. Next week, though, we will we'll talk about props. Okay, I'll be ready. 
again. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks again, and we'll see you guys next next week, next Friday on uh, Mixed In uh, Google Hangouts out. about indie movie making. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Tony. Thanks.